Hey everyone, today I'm going to be dropping magnets and seeing if they drop as fast as, the same, or slower than regular objects. As you know, Earth is magnetic due to the convection of molten iron in the outer liquid core. So because the Earth is a magnet, does that mean if we drop a magnet on Earth it will be attracted to it and technically it should fall faster than a non-magnetic object? So I'm going to be testing this out along with another interesting theory proposed by Boyd Bushman. Boyd Bushman was a Lockheed Martin inventor, has a lot of patents in his name, a really cool engineer, but he also had some really weird theories. One of the experiments that he said he did is he got two magnets and forced them together. So he took two of the north poles of the magnet and forced them together and then he dropped them off a building. And he claimed that they always fell slower than something that didn't have magnets inside of them. So I'm going to be doing that experiment also today in a little more controlled manner inside of a vacuum chamber so we can negate the influence of air and then drop the magnets and see if they actually fall faster when we force the two like poles together. So first let's go ahead and test if a magnet drops faster than a regular object because the earth is magnetic. Okay so here's my setup. I have my vacuum pump going to my vacuum tube here. Also at the top here I've drawn a red line. This is where I'm going to be starting all my start times and then ending when it hits the bottom. And then I have two identical balls here. One of these is a magnet and one is not. Okay, turn on the vacuum pump. Okay, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Now let's watch them both fall at exactly the same time at a thousand frames per second. The frames are shown on the left side of each picture. And I measure that they both hit at exactly the same time, 0 0.334 seconds. So within our error limits, we got the same time whether or not it was a magnet or a regular steel ball falling. So why doesn't a magnet fall faster to the Earth even though the Earth is a magnet? The first reason why this doesn't happen is the magnetic field of Earth is actually really weak. The magnetic field is only around 0.25 gauss. Whereas a simple refrigerator magnet is around 100 gauss. But even if the magnetic field were stronger, it still wouldn't attract it to the Earth. That's because the magnetic field that we're dropping it through is a uniform magnetic field. For example, right here I can mimic the magnetic field of the Earth by putting two strong neodymium magnets with their opposite poles facing each other. You can see that when I put this third magnet in between here, it aligns with the magnetic poles. But it definitely doesn't fall faster towards the ground because there's no attraction towards the ground. It's attracted to the magnets on both ends. So it causes the small magnet to rotate but not fall faster. So if you're anywhere on the Earth not near the North or South Pole, you're not going to see an attraction towards the Earth. But if you're near the North and South Pole, there actually will be a slight downward component to the magnetic flux. So if you have a compass, it'll point slightly downward. This can actually be a problem for planes flying near the North or South Pole because it creates something called magnetic dip. That means that their compass points slightly downward. Now we're going to try Boyd Bushman's experiment where he pushed the two like poles of a magnet together and dropped them and said that it dropped slower. I have one magnet in here right now. I put this one on top. You can see how it repels it. So if I put a lot of force on it, I can force the two magnets together. Ugh. So now the two like poles are facing each other, but I've got them held in place with my drill bit here, which I drilled in, and then I'm gonna cut it off on the edges there. Okay, so I've got that filed off just fine. Now I'm gonna cut it right here. Okay, here's our final product. Three, two, one. Okay, now put the attractive ends towards each other. So instead of just comparing it to a regular object, I'm using two magnets that are attracted to each other because there are some sources that say that he claimed that that actually falls faster than a normal object. So we should be able to see a difference here if it's really true. Okay, there we go. Exact same setup as before, but now the poles are opposite of each other. So they're attracted to each other. Okay, three, two, one. Now let's look at them both dropping exactly together. My start time is measured from when the plunger end of the syringe passes the red line, and the end time is when it hits the bottom. And I get that they hit the ground at almost exactly the same time within one one thousandth of a second. So although Boyd Bushman claimed that if you push two magnets together they'll drop slower, I don't see any reason why in physics that would happen. 
and also experimentally I don't see it happen either. Now if for some reason this did actually work so that when you push two like poles of a magnet together they actually fall slower that would mean that the gravitational constant has changed a little bit it's a little bit less so there's some opposing force to gravity. So that means that when we weigh the magnets they should weigh less when we force two magnets together. So let's see if that's even the case. They're attracted to each other. 6.905 Okay, now this is opposing. So I got a little nervous during this part because the ones that were attracted really to each was. other actually weighed more than the ones that were repelling each other. 6.597 but if I flip them, so those were repelled, now they're attracted. So I decided the magnets were too close to the scale, so I moved them further away. What? So with repelling magnets, we get 6.556. Now if I open it, now they're attracted. Okay, same. 6.55 as well. <laughs> that was close. Okay, so the reason I was getting different weights before is because the magnets were really close to the scale, and so it was attracting some of the components in there in different ways, depending on how I had the magnets turned. But once I move them really high up away from the scale so the magnetic field isn't affecting it, then I get the same weights. Before we go, I'd like to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Blinkist offers the best selection of nonfiction books. It pulls out the key takeaways and puts them into 15 minute text and audio explainers called Blinks. So all you do is download the Blinkist app and then select the titles that you prefer among your favorite categories. Then you add your picks to your library and create your personalized experience. What I love about Blinkist is it gives you the main ideas from the book without actually reading the entire book. For example, just before I made this video, I already read two books today. I read about how food can affect your anxiety levels and also how to think more laterally. For me, it's a big time commitment to read a book, so I wanna know it's a good book before I read it. Blinkist helps me get the main ideas from a book before I actually read the whole thing. And if I like it, then I can go ahead and read the whole thing. So Blinkist has condensed over 5,000 titles in 27 different categories and also produces short casts, which are blinks for podcasts. So if you want to try Blinkist today, click the link in my description and you'll get a free 7-day trial and 25% off a premium membership. And thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is a channel similar to this one where I do my videos in less than a minute. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.